akakuja akanitoa alikuwa amenifunga mikono na miguu sasa so, akanitoa akanipeleka kwa bwao kulikuwa na shimo hapo akaniambia this is your grave ni kama ya mayai yenye tu inaweza kuda mayai ya kwa kachumbi kidogo akachukua kisu na akanidunga sasa hapa so hata ukiwa uko chini utasikia tu sauti yake akiniita huge crowd follow the suspect wherever he led the investigators some curious some being for his blood kwa hivi vinga alivyoongezeka badala ya kupungua kama ilivyotarajiwa the overwhelming stench of death from the house of torture an aura as powerful as the reality residents of Kihoto in Naivasha have been at pains to come to terms with the first vampire Geoffrey Maderi alias Fongo has been charged with the murder of Miriam Wairimo who died on August the 29th of 2008 the wounds were not even bleeding so i didn't have even blood to bleed Naomi Wanjiro who survived the ordeal appeared in court where she narrated how she met Maveri in Naivasha in September 2008 Tonight on Case Files we return to Naivasha town where a woman taken hostage by self-confessed serial killer speaks out for the first time about her ordeal in the hands of a cannibal. Naomi Wanjiru was subjected to terror but managed to survive. Case Files The Cannibal continues tonight. When case files met Naomi Wanjiru in Naivasha, her face will not betray the torture she underwent in the hands of a man she says she used to see on the streets of Naivasha town, but one she never imagined for a second she would cross paths with. When the earth mover excavated a piece of land where a house stood, in the full view of television cameras and before an angry and anxious public in Naivasha town, Naomi was fighting for her life in a local hospital. Naomi had been rescued from Geoffrey Maderi alias Fongo's house in Kyoto Estate in Naivasha. Maderi had just been arrested after residents calling the police. A 16-year-old girl who had managed to break free from the man Esther King recounted our deal from the hospital bed. Naomi was lucky to be alive. Underneath the small bed where she, Esther Kinyi and their tormentor shared a bed for a straight one week was a decomposed body of yet another woman. The stench was too strong. And just as intense was the anger and confusion of members of the public. Alafu kuna siku alinidunga akafinya damu kwa kikombe kabisa ikaja apo ikikata kutoka anadunga pengine anafinya sana mpaka itoke at that time it was not clear how long the body had stayed buried hidden from the captives and relatives the medics told the media naomi had turned gray and pale she was on the edge of dying naomi's story reads like a chapter from a fiction book the event that will characterize her life started on the second week of september 2008 Naenda kwa duka ile tu ni meza yaya azim kitu 730 So ni capital like two blocks from ile plot nilikuwa naishi Then nikakutana na two street boys wakanipita tu wakanisalimia then wakanipita then mimi nikaendelea tu kwenda ndio tena wengine wawili wakatokea 
then vile walitokea au wengine wenye wamenipita na wakawa wanarudi so nikazipata katikati yao then vile nilizipata nilisikia tu nimefunikwa mapua na mdomo so it's like nikakuwa unconscious so sikujisikia tena Naomi, a mother of two at the time, told Case Files she realized she was in danger when the parking boys now turned abductors turned her in to a man she says she had never seen in the past. A street boy who at times served as a casual worker at a bus terminals in the town. <laughs> He was he was dressed in black then kulikuwa na giza so nilikuwa tunaona nguo zake ni black alikuwa na jacket kubwa kabisa imefika huko chini so akaanza kunizunguka at first akuniongezesha chochote so alikuwa tu anazunguka akiniangalia so akaniuliza ninaitwa nani Mother then had a frog marched to a residential area. Naomi claims she simply could not resist. She couldn't even scream. So at a siku kimbia like like even two meters. So akanishika wakati alinishika I had just a sharp sharp pain on my thigh. Then ndio nikaona kumbe ame ame ni stab na kisu. So tukaenda tukafika kwa plot. It's a plot unaingia tu iko na nyumba like tatu east side tatu east side. Akaingia akafungua ya kwanza alikuwa anakifungua. So kati alifungua it was very dark but alikuwa na form. Akamulika akafunga. Naomi says she was welcomed by Wimpa, a grown. She realized she wasn't alone in the house. Nikasikia sauti it was like someone cry asking for help you know but so ile ati sauti kubwa ni ya chini so ndio akaanza kumulika mulika nikaona kitanda akaniambia kuja hapa nikasikia ameambia kulikuwa na mtu kwa kitanda we songa huko so the time ali alimulika hiyo bed i saw that something it was like an animal something cuz aku aka binatam alikuwa amefura zina miza kwa bed then alikuwa na damu everywhere ungeona mato ungeona nini so akamsongesha then ya kalala katikati it's a small bed akalala katikati then mimi akaniambia ni lale saa mbele yake the lady Naomi is referring to was 16-year-old Esther Akinyi, a woman who had been held captive in the house for several days. Naomi says she tried to break away from Maderi's murderous grip for the second time. So vile aliamka nilisikia tu nimegongwa. So vile nilegongwa it's like nikazimia or something. Sasa kunisikia tena. So uh, I think I died. For a straight 7 days Naomi will be subjected to untold terror in the hands of a self-confessed serial killer, a man who feasted on the blood and flesh of his victims. The beating did not stop there. There was more to come. So we really come akatuliza mnaongea nini? Tukamwambia tuongee kitu. So mimi nilikuwa nimelala chini like there na rudem pale kwa bed so akakuja okay sometimes nilikuwa ninasikia nimelewa then inaisha like 2 minutes then inarudi so wakati inaisha naona ule msana mwingine ana scream but si ile sana alikuwa anamuuma ana mama kabisa unaona ametoa nyama then 
anakuja ananidunga na kisu so akinidunga damu inaruka then anaweka kwa kikombe kulikuwa na kikombe ya yellow ya mabati anaweka so hapo pakikauka anadunga pengine so anauma ule msana anakula then anakunywa damu it's like it's like vile mtu anaweza kula maybe tuseme mkate na chai Esther Kenyes back seen here after being rescued shows deep bite marks the several times that Madheri dug into her skin biting away her back and chewing it before downing it with Naomi Wanjiru's blood ana ananitoa damu na syringe akitoa anaweka kwa chupa akaweka kwa chupa ya soda like chupa tatu then usiku kabisa anatoka nazo anaenda What will turn this street boy into a killer? What drove him to draw blood from his victims and eat away their flesh as they watched? For the first time after his long stay in prison where he's facing yet another charge of murder, Case Files met Geoffrey Maderi alias Fongo a few kilometers away at Naivasha Maximum Security Prison. The man who took Naivasha town by storm with his bizarre crime says Naomi and her fellow captive were lucky to have survived. He was called just in time. Sasa kuna ile phone sasa nilikuwa na bonga naye. Sasa nikamwambia damu nimetoa iko ngapi? Mbili. Kaniambia au sisi usiue hao. Nimeua watu wengi. Hao wacha wacha nao eh. Waende. Si mimi ndio nilitoa hao iko ngapi? Sasa mimi ndio sasa nilipelekea pasta sasa kwa pasta huko ndio nilikuwa naenda kumpelekea damu si kwa kanyumbani huko kanisani kitu saa moja huko kanisani kitu saa moja huko kanisani kitu saa moja for Naomi it was a case of pure luck the mother of two says she had given up on people and life Madheri had not a strict deed case files takes a short break alikuwa anamuuma anamuuma kabisa unaona ametoa nyama si ni kama ya mayai yenye tu naweza kula mayai anakuja ananidunga na kisu so akinidunga damu inaruka then anaweka kwa kikombe kuna kachumbi kidogo the abduction torture and killing occasion by Geoffrey Mader in Joroge on his victims will have gone unnoticed if it wasn't for Esther Akinyi, the woman who managed to sneak from his hideout straight in the hands of residents of Kyoto Estate. Geoffrey Maderi's arrest also attracted the attention of the police. This was after a body of a woman was discovered buried in a shallow grave in his house. It's like now tulikuwa tunaoza. Esther alikuwa anatoa madudu. Kwa hizi vinonda zile alikuwa ameumwa, unaona dudu inatoka. So that house was very disgusting, you know. Damu za panya, then the whole house ilikuwa full of blood everywhere. Damu zetu, damu za panya, so you can imagine a roof. Then I noticed kulikuwa na dudu mingi sana zilikuwa zinatoka penye nilikuwa. Penye nilikuwa nimekuwa chini ya kitanda. Then I didn't know zilikuwa za nini but kulikuwa na harufu mbaya sana. So I knew later that kulikuwa na maiti huko chini ya bed. Ya. Ya mchana. So I think wakati akiwa mtu kwanza anakuficha huko. So I think those the day I spent there to spend na hiyo maiti. For the first time in seven years, Maderi told case files it was this street boy going about his normal life until he was approached by a man ile kazi ile kibadua aliambia ile kibadua na isafanya ya kuua na unaleta damu unaleta matiti ya wanawake na kama ni mwanaume unaleta siri yake 
sasa hiyo nikakataa kaniambia hiyo kitu ni ya pesa nyingi eh kwa hiyo usipuuze hiyo kitu akudigala venye niliangalia kwa nyumbani venye tunakaa decide hata mimi nilikubali hasa few months kwa tukua tu kama sita wengine ya walikuza kaenda kujua gamu hii ndio ndivyo nilibakia sasa mimi akaniambia kuna ile nguvu bado itakupe ile ndio uendelee na ile kibadua ile itakuwa nikikupe sijua dini yake hiyo nguvu kwa mkono eh kuna ile kitu alinipea kiti 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 inakaa kama turungu akakuja akanipe na kitu inakaa kama damu eh na kaa na kaa damu lakini unaona ni nyeusi lakini kaa kaa damu yesi dikameza alafu akanisika na, na kitaba akanyanyesa akanisika hapo kwa mkono sijui kuna ile ile design aliomba asiye design niliomba mimi mi, 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 nikasahau niko wapi dakika hiyo hiyo nikakaa kama siku mbili kabla sijajua siku ya tatu ile ilikuwa nikakuja nikajidua nikajijua kujijua ndio sasa nilikuta akaniita kitu saa moja akaniambia sasa sasa hiyo nasikia uko na nguvu sasa hiyo niko na nguvu sana kuna wengine hata ulikuwa nasikia wana nidua wana mikono hiyo mikono nachukua naenda na kula Madhiri told case files is brief or simple ikifika hapa acha nayo nakuta na kuja sasa kuongea na mtapoa baka mara kula baka yeye roho yake haikula na yeye nyama zingine hizi zingine sikibakia haishika chini mafupa na haishika chini ya baada ya kula na sikia kuzuri ya si ndio mimi ni gumu sana ati unikute ati nikuwa ati kwa boy seri ati naenda na kula huko ni gumu sana ni gumu sana At first there were doubts about Madheri's mental status when he was arrested. The parking boy was throwing names and incidents of killings he had taken part in that appeared to have shocked police investigators. A medical report from a government doctor declared him fit and of sound mind. Wengine sana sana ni kuwa na acha gari ya mosi kikuja mimi naweka wanakuja wanapitia juu hasa watu wakikuja wanadhania na wameua na gari ya mosi sana sana ni kuwa na huo hiyo mauaji kama unaweza huwa mtu na acha hapo hakuna mtu ameniona siku hiyo hapo au mtu ananiona hasa sana sana ni kuwa na baba hiyo so alikuwa anashika panya anaeka kwa mdomo yote so inabaki tu mkia unaona panya iko ndani ya mdomo yake alafu tu mkia ndio na So mimi nilikuwa nafikiria maybe serial. Unajua vitu vingine hivi imagine. So that time nilijua ni real. Ni wakati alinipea. <laughs> Cuz alichukua ingine ikiwa tu hai. Then akaniambia fungua mdomo. So I did it cuz okay hata nilikuwa ni loose hope zin ninaweza ishi tena so nilikuwa na jua hata akifanya anything it's okay so nikafungua kayeka alafu ilikuwa as unaona inataka kupotea niko ndani ya mdomo yako so lazima uyume ndio iache kufanya hivyo yeah so nikauma then i have to eat tweet it kaisha now me told case file she sends the chance had come for her to be rescued when she had residents shouting for help when they said their eyes on Esther her freedom did not come easy Geoffrey Maderi was not done with her kuja kanitoa alikuwa amenifunga mikono na miguu sasa kanitoa akanipeleka kwa bwawa kulikuwa na shimo hapo akaniambia this is your grave so you have to pray for your last prayer na mwambie Mungu achukue roho yako So nikamwambia nimeomba. Akanichukua. Akanipeleka saa kwa kona hiyo plot. Akaeka mawe katikati. So akateleka hiyo mawe so akanilalisha. Then akanilalisha kwa hiyo mawe. So it was like 
anikate kichwa yangu kiyo saidi mwili baki hapa so akachukua vitu zake me was just quiet I was waiting yani hata siku anaogopa unazoe ile mtu anaogopa gati anakufa no i was just wishing for him to do it cuz nilikuwa nimechoka kabisa so akachukua kisu na akanidunga sasa hapa so i could feel nguvu yenye kwa ndani yake nilikuwa nasikia tu kwa mizizi yake through your kisu yani it was like paka nasikia anatetemeka ndani yake so ndio anikate akawacha kwanza amedunga lakini amewacha na apotee so i looked at him i could see like blood in his eyes when Naomi came about she was staring at sobbing relatives medical personnel attending to her and television cameras so me didn't know what happened but niliona police and kai nikafikiria ama maybe nimeshakufa cuz it, it was like a miracle it was like kawa ngeteke another 10 seconds awange nipata very serious that awangeweza they even gave up on us yeah cuz everyone alikuwa anakuza they are they were waiting to maybe wakuza wapate tushakufa cuz like for me i was turning gray it was like i was dead already the wounds were not even bleeding so i didn't have even blood to bleed the other girl alikuwa ameoza alikuwa anatoa hata madudu even in the safe hands of medical doctors naomi says the ordeal in the hands of the self confessed serial killer will not go away when i look at the patient mimi amelala karibu na mimi i could see that person nilikuwa naona ni kama ni yeye amezifanya ni mgonjwa and if i look very closely nina aki nilikuwa hata naamka naenda nafunua mtu you know it was very horrifying single lala usiku if you sleep unaanza kusikia kwa chini ya bed hospitali so you could feel hata kama kitanda inainuliwa looking back years later naomi says it wasn't a small matter for her kwa nilitoka huko everything ikaisha my life my friends my husband my family I lose everything cuz like for my husband I understand him there's no way he could stay with me so no one wanted even to stay with my kids not even my family so they neglected me and my kids too and my kids were innocent and that's even though when I pain sana cuz watoto wangu walikuwa wakubwa and they knew this story and so akati mtu yeye anakuuliza mama kulienda aje you know you feel so bad okay after kukaa kwa safe house now hakuna mtu ali it's like sasa walinitupa huko kwa safe house no one came to visit me as in to know what happened Madheri was arrested and charged before in a Kurwa Naivasha court for the murder of one woman, rape and illegal confinement of Naomi and Esther. Naomi says she has recovered from the ordeal but still cannot understand why Geoffrey Madheri alias Fongo decided to pick on her. Naomi has questions for Gordon Man. Tanga why? At least unge choose to at least akwa na watu watam support. You know, you start thinking about okay Does God hate poor people? As in you don't have parents? You don't have anyone? You're just alone. You don't have a brother or a sister. Why? You know. If only singe kuwa na watoto, singe kubali kupitia this shame. You know. Sometimes I feel like okay, I can take my life and die. Na nisaurike. What about the kids? Sisi taka tena wakuwe chokora siku moja they do the same thing nilifanywa najua car only my kids wananifanyanga ni live but if it's not for them i'm nothing life has never been the same again for naomi she had to put on hold her studies her life 
and attend to the life of her two children. Geoffrey Madheri is currently serving a four-year sentence at Naivasha Maximum Security Prison. Geoffrey is facing a lesser offence of illegal confinement. The prosecution did a shoddy job of prosecuting rape and assault charges against him. They failed to produce in court evidence they should have obtained from his victims. Naomi has gone back to school and she is now sitting for primary school education exams. The pastor that Geoffrey Maderi Fongo dragged into his killing spree was cleared by the government. Police could not link him to any of Fongo's confessed killings. Esther Kinyi recovered but she never returned to Naivasha. Why he did that? And why did he choose me? You know, from everyone else, why me? Really, why? I only ask him that. Maybe he have a reason that I don't know. Geoffrey Maderi is still at Naivasha Maximum Security Prison. His barbaric undertakings are still alive among the thousands of residents of the town in the valley, Naivasha. Naomi Wanjiro is currently leading a quiet life and is back in school, trying to catch up on a period wasted in the hands of a killer. Case Files, the cannibal, is still a case open. Denson Sarigo for Case Files.